Hey everyone, I'm back. It's me, Only Run Very New. Back to bring you some more Bravo gameplay using the Talishar client. We're going back to the pre recorded games that I analyzed for this video. Moving forward, there might be a mix of live and pre recorded. Um, well, yeah, let's just hop right into it. We're playing against Bolton today. I sideboard basically like it's going to be Raiden because that's all I see anymore is Raiden. So that means all the defense reactions um, besides the red unmovable. So no zealous belting to like try to race combo or anything. I just like three fate for scene and three sync against Raiden. But as we see, he is on sabers, so we're gonna have to figure out how to be aggressive enough to stop his combo. As being aggressive is definitely how I like to play the combo matchup. Um, just sort of be disruptive and put them in a position where they're too low on life to like ever combo us. I'm not sure if that's the right way to go about it. Um, but keeping your life total high and like trying to fatigue them just kind of get is asking for it. They're still going to like find their combo. They're going to be able to easily do it and they're going to have such a huge advantage afterwards that it's going to be kind of difficult for you to win. Like, they just have so much soul, they can, like, Celestial Cataclysm. They'll have so much soul, they can just, like, kill you with Beacon. So I definitely like to take the aggressive approach. With this hand, um... Probably looking to Imposing Visage for a Showtime. And then, uh, also make a Surge. And probably tutoring up Crippling Crush. As it's just like the biggest, baddest attack. Um, we can't tutor up Command and Conquer, or I might consider that just to like get a defense reaction or a combo piece out of Arsenal. But of course, it's not a Guardian attack, so we can't tutor that up. And getting Stamp Authority instead of Showtime seems kind of bad. He doesn't have really any relevant on hits that he wants to be utilizing at this point in the game. Bolt of Courage draws a card, but he's not really going to do anything with that. And right here I'm thinking about do I make a surge? And I think I think I do. I could keep the Terra Sunder and be a little greedy to like arsenal a threat and keep a threat in hand. But um, there's no telling if that's better than a surge. So I just kind of take my surge value here. Pummel is a good one. I like to tuck Pummel and Arsenal a lot and wait for Command and Conquer. Because if you can Pummel, Command and Conquer, like a combo piece out of Arsenal, it's very good. The attack is with a take flight, and I'm going to draw a card off Showtime, so I think I do want to block with one of these blue attacks. There's a chance that we don't draw another blue, and we just have to throw the Crippling Crush without dominating it, but I think that's like fine. Of course I want to draw blue so I can dominate it. And I'm going to block the Take Flight, not the Saber, because the Saber would get plus two if you block with an attack, where the Take Flight only gets plus one. We end up not drawing the blue, so we can just like make another Surge and throw Command and Conquer. Arsenaling the Pummel, waiting for a... or play the Crippling Crush, rather. And then we Arsenal the Pummel, waiting for a Command and Conquer. We don't dominate it, but we still do end up getting a defense reaction from Arsenal, probably because he wants to charge his soul and build that soul up here. He uses Iron Song versus, which is a little cute. We, we do just want to get this Fate for Scene out of our hand, though, so we're just going to use the Fate for Scene and then pummel the hammer. Again, just trying to be as aggressive as possible. Uh, get their life as low as possible before they combo us so that um, they just don't really have the room to combo us. I don't have a ton of games into Combo Bolton, but this is definitely the strategy that has led me to the most wins, or the highest win percentage. I've tried to fatigue them, but it just gets so dicey after they combo, and on occasion they can even like triple Lumina combo you, and then you're just never living through that turn anyway. 
So I definitely like to be aggressive. This is another matchup where um, Buckling Blow and Buckle can be very strong because if you ever kill their Courage, they just sort of lose the game on the spot. Um, they turn into a really, really bad aggro deck once you do that. Maybe even like a bad mid-range deck because they have so many defense reactions in their uh, combo setup. Normally you would see like Sync Below and Soul Shield at the minimum, and sometimes you even see Fae for Scene. Okay, and we're just trying to use our Sync Below here, make it so he can't give this thing go again uh, by blocking with an attack. Um, I think I will sink the Starstruck, just kind of trying to look for a blue to dominate Spinal, and even if we hit a red, we have the Surge, so we can just throw the Spinal out. We end up hitting the blue, which is nice. Um, we'll get a React out of Arsenal, or maybe not. Maybe they don't really care about go again here. They hit us with a Courageous Steel Hand, which is a card I'm not normally used to seeing out of the combo deck. That might indicate that this is more of like a hybrid sort of sideboard swap into Sabres. Which is kind of an odd choice. I'm not sure, like... I've heard from Bolton players that Raiden is better into Bravo than the combo plan. But honestly, I think both are fine. Um, from the Bravo's side of the table, uh, Combo and Raiden both sort of present you with like an issue. It's not like a super free matchup or even easy. Um, just sort of like different ways. And if you think your opponent's sideboarding for Raiden, maybe that gives more points to Combo. I'm, I'm not sure. Here we see an engulfing light. There's a couple lines we could take. We could just take this engulfing light to the face and then dominate a starstruck. We could take the engulfing light to the face and not dominate starstruck, just look to pummel the starstruck. Or we could block the engulfing light with our showtime, which is a non-attack that blocks three, and then just like pummel the hammer and arsenal the starstruck with a surge up. When thinking between these three lines, just kind of always thinking about what my main win condition is, um, what I'm really looking to do, like on a big, like, macro level. And I'm definitely trying to just be super aggressive and get their life low, so that might give points to Starstruck plus Pummel. But then destroying a combo piece in Arsenal with the Pummel could also be solid. So let's rewind a little bit and see how he blocks this Spinal Crush. He just he just doesn't, right? He just takes six here. So either he doesn't have a defense reaction in Arsenal, or he's being super conservative with it. I feel like if it was defense reaction, he would have used it on the Spinal. So he can't even give Engulfing Light go again. So... If we don't think this is a defense reaction, it's probably a combo piece, because I feel like those are the only two things a combo Bolton would ever put in Arsenal. And if that's a combo piece, I kind of want to pummel a Command and Conquer. We see it's turn 5, which means we've seen 20 cards in our deck. We haven't seen a Command and Conquer yet. Um, we play 3, so... High likelihood that we find it, like, shortly. So I kind of like just taking three here and dominating Starstruck. Saving our Pummel for a Command and Conquer that we're anticipating will come soon to destroy his arsenal, which we also believe could be a combo piece at this point. Starstruck's just like a good amount of damage, and then it also 
Um, either forces him to use armor, forces him to use a big reaction like a soul shield, which he's indicating here by blocking only two. So he has the soul shield. Or it kind of gains us life if it crushes him because it means he can't attack us. He just sends a beaming bravado for five due to him having the courage. And I kind of just want to dominate a crippling crush. So I think I'm fine taking this five. It's kind of scary though, because when you get below like 32, um, if they combo you, you, there's like a good chance that you're just kind of dead. Dominating this crippling crush, of course, isn't going to like hit because as we see, he has a bunch of armor left, but we have to get through the armor somehow. Um, and I think taking damage to like force the armor so that now our disruption we start drawing will be very good because once he uses armor here it's all but guaranteed his arsenal is not a defense reaction and that it is indeed a combo piece so when we draw that command and conquer to go with our pummel it's going to be very good for us as we see we haven't drawn command and conquer yet um they must be kind of clumped together in the bottom half of our deck, which is a little unfortunate. But it also looks like he's not comboing us off yet. Our hand's kind of bad, though. Like, we, we can't be aggressive at all. The only way we could be aggressive is by just, like, hammering or pummeling the hammer, and that's not, like, super aggressive. Um, if he wanted to combo us next turn, he could just take 10. So it's not really threatening him in any disruptive way. So I almost just want to block this for six with two cards and then just hammer for six making a surge. Oh, there is another line though. If we really want to stop him from comboing, we could just like play an immovable, make a surge, and then play Warmonger's Diplomacy on him. Um, if he chooses War, he just can't combo us, right? Because he can't play Lumina. And if he chooses peace, he can't do anything. Um, and even if we choose war, we could still, if we draw Command and Conquer, we can pummel the Command and Conquer. So yeah, I kind of like that line. It's a little bit, maybe it's playing a little bit scared. Because um, like I said, my original plan is to just like get his life total as low as possible, as quickly as possible. And giving up a hammer for six to just um, tell him he can't combo next turn isn't really enabling that plan it's sort of just playing a little scared but at turn seven we're like halfway through our deck and it seems like it's very likely that he could combo us at any point here he only needs to draw one combo piece um, because he has a combo piece in arsenal right and he has plenty of soul so it could even be like double beacon or anything like that it just kind of buys us another turn to find a Command and Conquer. Or a different disruptive piece. Still no Command and Conquer. Um, but we can dominate Spinal. Uh, blocking with Crippling Crush. We could even just not block this and he would have to Snapdragon and Scalar it if he wanted to continue his turn. And if he uses Snapdragon Scalers, we might even be able to like catch him not being able to combo, because usually they save Snapdragons for the combo turn. And as we see, he does use Snapdragons here. I think he's maybe he has a backup plan of just like racing us. I don't block here, which is a little interesting. I mean, I would have only blocked for two because, you know, our, all of our things block for three, but... I'm just going to pause this here. All of our things block for three, but they all turn on uh, hero ability to give plus one. It looks like I'm getting a little frustrated by not being able to draw Command and Conquer, because this line looks like I'm going to Spinal... I'm going to Pummel Spinal Crush and then Arsenal Crippling Crush. Um, there's only one Pummel left in my deck, because I do believe I Pummeled a Hammer earlier. Um, I'm not 100% sure I like this play. I think it's a little panicky. 
Um, but of course, pummeling a spinal into a crippling crush turn might just buy us enough time to get his life total low enough where he can't really combo us. Because um, if he ever drops down to like three, all of a sudden he can't keep four cards just for our hammer for six. It looks like he was about to block nine, which would indicate that he wants to like sink below the pummel. Um, which I think would be kind of fine, because we probably think the sink blow is not an arsenal. But he, he backtracks and only blocks six. Which means our pummel is almost guaranteed to land, because it would have to be like soul shield plus spinal, or plus sink below. Still no command and conquer, but we draw our third pummel, to the, so it kind of replaces itself, which is nice. So we can just dominate this crippling crush, and then arsenal pummel. Expecting to hit a Command and Conquer at some point. I mean, it's turn 9. You see your whole deck by turn 15. Yeah, and he can't stop that. He can't stop that crush effect. So I think now he's just dead. Because he doesn't have enough life to play with here. We're just going to use one of these defense reactions because we have enough resources to pummel the Command and Conquer and block. And pummeling this command and conquer has got to just like seal the game up for us. There is a chance he just gives us his whole hand to play around the pummel, but he does not. He only blocks six. We get the Lumina out of Arsenal, which we were kind of expecting, and with him at three now. Um, hammer for six every turn prevents him from keeping a four card hand. But we don't even have to do that. We can just dominate this spinal. And that's the game. Kind of a fast and wild one there. Uh, that's definitely how I like to play against Combo Bolton. I think there's multiple ways you could try to beat that deck. Um, way back in the day, I used to like try to fatigue them and play like sigils and just keep my life total high. And when they combo, just kind of like hope I have a defense reaction and arsenal and like block with all my armor and defense reaction and arsenal and keep my life total as high as possible so that post combo I'm still at like 20 plus and then just try to kind of like win a normal game from there but I feel like it can get kind of dicey because if they have enough soul to not like lose half their combo like if they have like six soul it doesn't matter how much armor or defense reactions you have they're going to get all six swings and if the last like two to three swings hit that refills their soul by six and then all of a sudden now celestial cataclysm and beacon of victory are really huge deals they still have V for the Vanguard in their deck, so they can still have really, really big turns. Um, and you can still kind of end up losing from that point, because if you're trying to fatigue them, well, not really fatigue them, it's more like outlast their combo and then win us fair game. But if you play that way, usually their life is very high post-combo. Like, you only end up dealing, like, 8 to 15 damage to them before they combo at max, and then they just gain 6. So the game will be like 32 to 20. And they can usually just kind of outvalue you at that point. Because you won't have any armor and they won't have any, but they won't have any armor. Or I guess vice versa, they won't have any armor, but you won't have any armor. So it's kind of bad for you. Um, where the aggressive line is just kind of very disruptive. And it a lot of times it kind of like forces them to block with combo pieces when they don't want to. And if they're ever caught, like we caught this guy, with an arsenal that's not a defense reaction, once their armor's gone, we can just kind of tee off and um, hope to chain disruption. So hopefully this was a fun game to watch. Um, it was fun to come back to, like, analyzing a pre-recorded game instead of just uploading, like, a live reaction type gameplay. Uh, I think this is definitely some what I enjoy doing more, so we'll probably see more of this. I was just trying something new, trying to have fun. Um, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe down below. 
Uh, definitely like hearing from you guys. And I'll see you guys next week. Hope you have a great weekend.